You might know today's guest as the beloved 90s pop icon and creator of songs like Damn I Wish I Was Your Lover. Sophie B. Hawkins is stepping into a new era with her recent album Free Myself, and we're chatting with her about how she's doing just that with the new release. Plus, Sophie shares how she's stayed true to herself over the past three decades in the business. This is Advocate Now. Sophie, we are beyond thrilled to have you with us today. Congrats on your new album, Free Myself. This album marks a new era of music for you, but aside from it being a rebirth musically, would you say that it's also been a rebirth for you personally? Absolutely. I mean, all the music comes from my personal experience. It's like the personal experience has to happen to open up the music that's already inside and the poetry that's already inside. That's why I always say it's the triggers that are the teachers you know, um, and the triggers are the things that bring out the best work. So yeah, it is a rebirth and it is a time of like feeling that I'm literally being birthed and I've given birth twice and it's a great feeling to finally be birthed. <laughs> Absolutely, I know exactly what you're talking about, about the, the being birthed part. You're very yes. well known for your 90s breakout hit, Damn, I Wish I Was Your Lover, but you recently yes. said that you went from Damn, I Wish I Was Your Lover to I'm Better Off Without You, which is the title of your new single. Tell yes. me about that shift and how that happened for you. Well, they're both, Damn, I Wish I Was Your Lover will always be true. And that, and it's always fun to sing on stage because I'm always amazed at the lyrics and the power of that song. And of course it brought me into the world, not just the music world, it brought me into the world. And so that was a huge, a huge identification I have with that song. But Better Off Without You is appropriate for now because at this stage of my life, I have to be truly free and I have to be able to be myself without looking over my shoulder and wondering if I said the wrong thing or did the wrong thing or who am I carrying with me? Who am I taking care of? Who am I, you know, all this, um, who's going to criticize me after this interview? I'm not worried about any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I Better Off Without You really is the essence of going out not just it's like not as a single person but as a solo free entity autonomous standing by my work including damn i wish i was your lover standing by myself and really knowing that is the strongest i can be standing by yourself is the strongest anyone can be and what an incredible place to be that that is yeah. so amazing and better off without you also explores betrayal self-love yeah. as you're talking about forgiveness yeah. do you feel yeah. as if that's the ultimate triumph to reach a level of surrendering to the past releasing any yeah. shame and pain and really knowing and loving yourself yes yes i do and i like the way you phrased your question sonia it really is that when you get to you have these experiences that could have killed you but yeah. you can look at them now as a story as your story and you're not going to let somebody else tell your story you're going to tell somebody else in an intimate way, hopefully, how this, what this means to you, how it happened, why it happened, what your role is in all these things that have happened to you. And now you're owning them and they're part of your gift to the universe. Mm -hmm. So I'm wiser, I'm simpler, I'm funnier, I'm sassier, but only because of these very difficult, as you said, betrayals and losses. And I say in the song, I hope you heal your heart. So there's a sense of grace. Like I would want someone to say that to me as well. I mean, we've all been on every side of this, you know, this story. Yeah, there's such a, a, a liberation that comes with freeing yourself of, of that pain and any of those old stories that you're holding on to. Your yeah. new single, Love Yourself, is about confidence and the way that we talk to ourselves. How did you come to the realization that was really important for you to reframe your own inner dialogue in order to change your patterns and heal yes. yourself? That's really, again, I like the way you, you phrased it, change your patterns. There was some point in my 40s, probably just before I had my first child, and things were busting apart in that very long relationship I had. And I, I looked at myself in the mirror one day, and instead of finding fault with something in myself, I, I looked at myself and I said, you're really brilliant. You're really beautiful. And you know what? Someday everybody's going to know it. 
And I laughed and I laughed with myself, this really cute moment. And then I said to myself, hey, I don't know why I don't say that, <laughs> say that to myself more. It yeah. feels so good. It feels so, it feels so like it's creating space in me. So then I did start to make it a, a practice. Then by the time Love Yourself, the song came out, it, the story of the song is true. I went to a party, the folks were fine. I ate coconut, coconut cake, I drank old red wine. And it's true on the way home, I could have had that moment where I said, oh, I ate too much, I drank too much. I, you know, I said the wrong thing to so-and-so, whatever. But I didn't, I stopped myself or rather a voice that was totally unconscious stopped me and said, love yourself. You've always been ahead of your time, you know, advocating for others, supporting different causes like environmental protection, animal rights, LGBTQ equality. What are your thoughts on the progress that's been made and also where we seem to be headed? Well, we've made, um, imagine in 1992, I, in, I came out in the New York Times as omnisexual. Mm -hmm. I mean, then people didn't even come out. <laughs> And I came out as omnisexual truthfully because back then I knew my sexuality wasn't related to my gender or anyone's gender. And I also knew my sexuality wasn't actually as important as my sense of freedom and not being defined. So well, like I knew it would grow and change a lot and I didn't want to be hemmed in. So we cut from that when the, you know, and I was like, oh my God, Sophie's come out as omnisexual. She's nuts. And really the, you know, as as far as the gay movement had come, they didn't like that. And I say they, even though I felt I was part of it, it was like, oh, you have to be gay or straight. Now you cannot go around saying you're omnisexual. Cut to about four years ago, a, a bunch of kids were over at my house. I mean, real young kids, 12 year olds. And one of the kids said, I'm omnisexual. And I was like, oh my God, I can't say anything because I'm just a mom here. But <laughs> I made that word up. And so anyways, that's personal. And then publicly, what I'm so excited about, I mean, come on, Joe Biden, the Defense of Marriage Act, this is tremendous. You know, now you can be who you want to be and have all the benefits of being a human. You can have children, you can have rights, you can have protection. That's incredible. And it's not just being, and now we're allowed to say queer before, you know, like now you can basically define yourself, which is great. You talk about the early 90s and coming out as omnisexual. I mean, that was a time when people in entertainment were being blacklisted for owning who they were. Was there yeah. ever any hesitation to put yourself out there in that way? Well, no, because I, I mean, I was sad that it, it, it was so painful to be ridiculed. And I think that I was more ridiculed because I was feared. That was hard because I really love people and I didn't and I wanted to talk about it and I want everyone to feel free. And I want everyone to feel that they can explore, you know, their own creativity and their sexuality, I feel is potentially part, a big part of their creativity. And so is their gender. So I feel that I was isolated and I was marginalized. And that wasn't, and that wasn't nice for me because I wanted to be part of the conversation. Thankfully, I'm still alive and I'm part of the conversation. <laughs> And it has been more than 30 years since you first broke onto the music scene. And then you had these massive hits, which were featured in popular TV shows and films and still are. You were nominated for a Grammy. You're still constantly evolving as an artist while remaining true to yourself. What was it that made you realize that this was the right time to create and release new music? Oh, well, you know, I, you know, that's a, Sonia, it's a good question. Why this time? The truth is I was trying to get versions of this music out. You know, it had different songs on it, different uh, versions of these songs, but I could, it was just that there was blocks and that was part of the journey and why I feel so happy to, why I named it Free Myself is because the blocks, I suddenly saw a path and I decided to run like, a, like I'm gonna make this touchdown for myself. So it, it's like I wanted to get it out before and I kept trying to, and it was like, you know, it's like the, the hero's journey with just obstacle after obstacle. So basically, really, I'm responding to the clear path that finally, I finally found. I'm Sonia Baghdadi. Thanks for watching and advocating. For more stories and content like this, visit advocate.com and advocatechannel.com.